Hey there guys, it's Metro and today we are back with another video in the new player guide series and this time we're going to be talking about routes. This is a video I've been working on for a little bit now and uh, obviously season four has really shifted up about how you're doing some of these routes. So I want to give you guys, now that you have a video for every single dungeon, I want to give you guys a video on routes and how I will optimize my routes or at least the routes I'll be doing. I just want to keep a couple things clear before we start here. These are not like MDI like routes uh, this is a type of season where you're probably gonna see some pretty crazy things and if you look at like top key pushers they're probably doing things like optimizing per a fix maybe even you know like changing completely what they're doing every single time uh, the affixes change in a dungeon so they might do mother load one way the one week mother load the next week differently I'm not going to be doing that this season and I wouldn't really encourage you to do that either uh, if you're a new player, if this video is appropriate for you, I would definitely try to learn one route and do it the same way every time. Uh, and for the most part, there's not really any dungeons or pulls or things that you might want to switch up constantly because of affixes. There's a few things, uh, and we'll talk maybe more about those in the affix video that me and Cop are eventually going to make. But for now, uh, I'm going to show you guys, I have on the screen here my... Um, I made a little Google Drive. Uh, the links in the Google Drive are the export strings. It's a paste bin. Then you just copy the, the string from there and import it into the add-on, which I'll show you how to do right now. Uh, but yeah, that's going to be in the description of this. And as you see, the last one that I have yet to finish is Muller Load Teaming. I have two separate routes. One's just for every other week of the, the year. And then there's uh, one for teaming specifically. So uh, the way the add-on works is it's a bit of pain. So let, let, let's show that now. Um, but yeah, the way the add-on works, it's a bit of a pain. It, uh, it it kind of like, you know, you can't make a route per week. You have to make it and then it changes like every week. So it's like it's the same for every week, I mean to say. So here is the mother load route that I have uh, for, uh, you know, every other week of the year. And it shows you, you know, it's the same no matter what. But then if you go to teaming, you realize that it's wrong. Like it's not even enough count. So, um, so I just made a second one for teaming for every other dungeon. And we're going to look at all of these right now. But um, we're going to do the teaming one for Mother Load right now together. And I think this will give a good kind of a starting point for you guys who are maybe trying to understand just how routes work. Like what I should be thinking about. And then the rest of them will just quickly go over some of the more important points. And I would encourage you guys to export them and check them out yourself. Because uh, I don't want to go into that much detail. Like I don't want this to be like a two hour video. So. Anyway, uh, so on teaming, you know, now there's some precedent here to pull a lot and lust on the on the start, I would say. Um, so we might actually do that. Um, we, we could probably just get these three together here. And it's going to depend if it's teaming fortified, which is one of the combos. Uh, we have either teaming uh, volcanic. That's a really, re this is like a really, really, really easy week. But it is tyrannical, so it's a bit of a tougher week. Uh, and then we also have teaming uh quacking and uh fortified so that's a much harder week but either way i think this is probably what we would recommend so uh, what i've been doing is setting uh, the packs that we're going to lust on with red so yeah we're going to pull all of this and lust out of the gate okay and then uh, what we're going to do is next we're going to go in the obelisk and instead of going anywhere with the obelisk we're just going to leave it here so i've been using the obelisk i've been making a blue color uh, typically um, if you see the other route I'm taking it all the way up here and we're going to lust on the boss first but since uh, teaming is you know such a trash focus week even on a fortified or even on a tyrannical week uh, I think we want to lust on trash for sure to maximize that so that's how we're going to start the dungeon uh, and then we're just going to leave this here and and the reason we're doing this is because if you see here let's take one one quick look at why this is a problem here it's because as you see teaming uh, I'm 12 percent short effectively so yeah, you, you need a lot more count, so we're going to have to get a lot of it here. So next up, we'll pull this. Oh, okay, we didn't want to do that. Uh, but yeah, anyway, ne next up, we'll pull this pack and combine these two together. So that's a nice little pull there. Then we'll pull these solo, and you really want to dodge these if you can. Uh, some weeks, like Necrotic and Explosive and some of the other weeks, like they are not really uh, something that you want to be fighting. Uh, same with um, Sanguine, too. So I like to pull these things back, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, then we're going to go ahead and kill that pack there. And then now we're in this area here. So this is typically where you want to be... Um, when you leave this area, you typically want it to be over 60%. And uh, that's accounted for in the other route. But I'm not actually sure if that's going to be feasible in teaming. So let's learn about it together. We'll see how much count there is. Uh, so we're just going to pretty much get it all. I think legitimately uh, the last uh, route I made, we just got almost all of it. So... Um, yeah, just these are here that you're not really they're like behind stuff. So Wait, is it that one? Yeah, these are like 
No, no, not this one, but this one here is like behind stuff, so you're not really gonna get that one, but everything else we're gonna get. And the, the Peacekeeper, uh, it does give extra count, but I think for most people, it'd probably be better if you didn't fiddle with it. And just realize that whatever we're pulling here doesn't even really matter. Like, you can pull whatever you want here. I'm, in fact, I'm just gonna make it all one pull here, just to si signify that. Like, it has no bearing on anything. It's not dangerous. It's nothing that you even need to be worried about. You just need to have enough count that you're able to progress. So, let's just say get to 60 again, and it uh, looks like that's gonna be pretty tough to do. Uh, without these peacekeepers but yeah typically i would want to see uh, 60 and uh, we see it there so let's just assume you're going to get some of the peacekeepers like i say uh, basically these mobs jump in the peacekeeper as long as you did damage to the jockey before they do you should get count for both and that's pretty valuable a lot of people say that's like ridiculously valuable uh, but yeah so we're or actually we're yeah a little behind uh, or we're a little ahead because we didn't pull this pack yet so let's just Get rid of those just for uh, consistency sake, and we'll pull that now. Yeah, so that's 60.1, uh, or 61.1, basically, so pretty good. Uh, and that's with all of this stuff. And by now, definitely Lush should be back up, so next up, we'll pull the boss, and uh, again, designate that as red. Uh, and then I have these notes here. Um, just need around 60% or higher here. Uh, pack order does not matter at all. So yeah, at this point, uh, you're more worried about instead, like typically on dungeons, you'd be more worried about what you are pulling and what you're not pulling. But in here, it doesn't matter at all. You just want to have enough count. So we'll see if 60 is actually good enough. Uh, that might not be the case, but we'll find out. So you're going to kill the boss. And then I like to combine these two here together. So I've been uh, any type of like somewhat dangerous pack. I've been using this light blue color. So this is a somewhat dangerous pack, something that you need to be aware of something on specifically. And then we're just going to pull these individually and uh, keep going up here we need a lot of uh, trash here because we need to clear this out uh, typically i pull this too not necessarily because we need the count from it but more so because a lot of people accidentally aggro it when they try to get the spider this is not actually right here it's more like right here it's kind of in between these two packs so typically when you go to this pillar uh it's a good chance that somebody's going to aggro that so I, I just get it anyway uh, now we're going to kill this and again we'll designate it as blue and uh, that'll be that and we're gonna pull this all the way up so we're at 79 percent so actually probably pretty good on count here we're gonna pull this all the way up here um that's everything yeah just gonna skip up here and now again uh typically lust would be up here but i don't know if it's going to be in fact i don't think it would be one thing to maybe think about is that you know if you uh if you still need a lot of count here basically if you lust out, out of the gate then just clear a pot part like to the boss clear path to the boss and use lust on the boss and then come back and get even more count uh but yeah uh either way we'll just assume that we have lust here and uh I, I think we should honestly but maybe not maybe it's not feasible it depends on how the run goes and i don't normally do this route so uh we'll just not we'll, we'll say we don't have lust here um anyway uh well no you know what you have to have luster yeah one way or the other you have to have luster because if you don't have it here then that means you're not going to have it where you want it. So let's just assume we're going to have less there. And now we continue on with the dungeon. We're going to have to do this pack here to be able to enter the obelisk at least. Usually want to be at over 80 at this point. Uh, over 80 is good. Like anything over, like the more over 80 you are, the better. So that's fine. We get that uh, blob now. We're going to take that thing all the way up here. And we're going to, yeah, skip all of this area here, which is something that a lot of people were doing in season one, two, and three but it required really stupid skips, like things that I would never, ever, ever recommend doing in a pug, uh, but it was really valuable, so a lot of people did try to do it, and almost always resulted in disaster. Like, if you went here, and you needed to onk to skip this, and you failed to onk, or onk was used improperly, that was it, the key was over, and like, now you have to clear it all, so never recommended that, but now it's very, very easy to do. So anyway, that is up to 80, almost 84%. Then we're going to kill the boss. This is a boss that we used to want to lust on, but you can't really lust here anymore with this new route. Uh, okay, now we're killing that pack. Pretty dangerous pack on Fortified. Uh, here, I like to get all four of these together, and that is only 91%. So yeah, we need a lot more count. So um, what to think about? We probably could have pulled extra here. I think this is probably what we want to do. Um, but let's see what the rest of it looks like. I mean, you could always pull this stuff here. This is actually, th these mobs are actually pretty free. Um, so I say we get these. We need to be at, I believe, it says it gives 1.3% count, but Jix and others were saying that this is incorrect. So, um, you know what, maybe we just pull this too. Is that, that's still not even close to enough. So, yeah, let's definitely get one more pack elsewhere. So we'll go backwards 
And uh, I'd say probably this pack here is pretty good. So let's see the blob. Uh, right before the blob, we'll add a one before, and we'll do that. And we're gonna, I'm gonna put a little uh, blue marker here just to indicate that uh, this is an important pack that I normally. Oh, actually, this is what we've been doing with teaming. Uh, right. So with teaming, I, I forgot already, but but um, anytime we're pulling something that I don't normally pull for teaming exclusively, then I s indicate it with that uh, pink color, which there was a lot probably here. So yeah, let's go back and do that quick, just so we have everything on the same page. Again, this would be pink. All of this is going to be pink. And this just indicates that it's something that I wouldn't normally pull, but I'm only pulling it for teaming, and that's about it. I mean, I could make this pink too, but frankly, I think it's pretty obvious what's happening at this point. So, Okay, so let's see where we're at. 98%. That's still not enough. Just shy. But yeah, so you know, some of these bombs, like if you kill the bomb, it'll give, um, it'll give count. I don't know if it says that here, but uh, yeah, you can... Um, as long as you kill it and it doesn't kill you, it doesn't blow up on you, uh, you will get count from it, I believe. So uh, you might often have a little bit extra count in here just from that, uh, but we do need, um, yeah, we don't need that much more. So realistically, we're good, but I've been doing this. I've just been saying a safety pack. Oh, I keep pressing that. Uh, but yeah, so we'll make this blue and we'll say this is, call this a safety pack. Uh, we also, yeah, so. I have. I already have a note here from the previous um, when I was editing on, on the other version. So, yeah, this is just all safety. Maybe we draw a little uh, line here, um, just to make sure that you have ninety some percent, because you really want to make sure that you don't accidentally go over count here, or you don't want to be under count effectively. Because if you're under count, then when you get here, you have to kill this pack, and that's not ideal. So, that'd be it. We'll kill this, and we will make that blue because it's an obelisk. And that is it. We'll drag it up here. There you go. And then the final pull is obviously the boss, which we'll mark and oops, uh, we'll mark and put lust on. So that's that. 100%. A little overcount, and uh, it's fine. Definitely want to be overcount in this situation. It's better to be overcount than undercount here because if you're undercount, it means you then have to pull uh, a pack that you really don't want to pull, or you have to go all the way back to the start, which is an option, but. Not an ideal one. So anyway, that's the route, uh, and now I can export it. I uh, can do that by getting all this text and putting it in a paste bin. So that's what you're going to see. If you want to import it, you then you know just take this text and uh, hit the import button and just copy paste it in here. And then as you see, um, it's going to say like, oh, it's going to update it. But if you already have it, it's going to try to update it uh, or whatever. Um, yeah, just update it or make a copy. But anyway, so that's the mother load teaming route, and uh, that'll also be in the document. But uh, let's quickly go through some of the other routes. All right, so I think we've explained everything in mother load. The only change, yeah, the only change that I, I made here is that you need more count here. So uh, quickly going through some of these, I just want to show them off and, uh, you know, explain some of the more important parts. So a tall teaming is actually a good one to start with because, uh, frankly, a tall teaming used to be an absolute nightmare. And uh, it's not anymore. The reason it used to be a nightmare is because uh, this pack is this one here. Yeah, this one is not always here. It's like here. There's a note on it. G29 is not always present. Teaming enemies of G2 are not always present. And team, uh, G27 is not always present. So that means if th this pack might not be here some weeks, this pack might not be here some weeks or the extra trash in this pack. And then this pack might not be here in some weeks. So it's like, it's just random, I guess. I don't know exactly how it's designated, but we don't have to pull any of these now. We don't have to worry about whether or not this pack is here and whether or not we could uh, get count from it or not. So all we're doing in teaming is just skipping this pack, which is not what I was doing in the previous, uh, in the non-teaming route. And then we're just getting extra count from these three packs. And that is that, okay? Um, so yeah, that's really it. Uh, the regular route is the route that I've basically been running the whole expansion. Uh, and the only thing to note here is that somebody needs to pull this away I have a little note here. Uh, one player needs to take this away, so the other four can enter the obelisk, and then just make sure that that obelisk is dragged somewhere that you're safe. It doesn't actually matter where, uh, just somewhere that when you come out, you're safe, because if you come out in the middle, you'll just aggro that pack again, so you don't want that. Uh, so that's a tall. Let's keep going. We'll look at Freehold, which is actually another uh, one that probably needs some commentary on it. Uh, the thing about Freehold is that um, these packs here are going to vary. Uh, so as you see, they're like, um, they're like, whatever, like shaded out basically. And that is because I've already joined the, uh, the pirate gang, right? So this week, uh, for example, it is a uh, Eudora's gang and it's going to get rid of any of the uh, water elemental casters, like those, like, um, whatever the Sarok dudes. 
Uh, and that's not a problem, obviously. Like, that's a good thing, typically. But the problem is it's hard to account for the count. Especially because when you join the gang, but before you kill the boss, the mobs are bugged for some reason. And they can still be part of the pack. Like, uh, for example, in this pack here, when you pull these, these two will then, like, bug out and they'll be in combat. Like, they'll come and fight you. So, this is before you kill Eudor. After, or whatever. Before you kill the Council of Captains. After you kill the Council of Captains, that won't happen anymore. So, it's difficult to account for count, but... All we're saying here is just get to 97. Like you can go into this area here and you could get probably, that's probably like 50% count right there. All of these mobs can be pulled. Uh, this one's a little bit far out of the way, but all of these mobs can be pulled and uh, yeah, you can gain a lot of count. So however you get here, it doesn't really matter. If you literally pulled none of this extra stuff because the list was just up really, really fast. Like you didn't get any of the extra, cause this is like here, you're gonna get extra um, count because of lust. You're waiting for lust. So that you get a little bit extra count because you're fighting mobs that you normally wouldn't have access to fighting. Uh, but either way, um, yeah, just get to 97. This gives, uh, or this, the, the, whatever, the spire. The first spire gives 1.5 and the second spire gives 1.5. And we'll just be killing that second spire with the boss. So that's freehold. And nothing really changes on teaming, honestly. It's just the, uh, the same, only there's a um, little bit more count needed. Uh, you just, again, got to get to 97. There's almost nothing changed. Yeah, that's literally the only change. Oh, yeah, no, then that's right. Yeah, it's a little bit harder to get to 97. So I actually recommend in this route to not even try to do that. Uh, if you can't do it, no big deal. Just get count here. There's a lot of count here. So that'll be in the route and explain there. Okay, so let's keep moving. We'll go into King's Rest. This is probably one of the easiest routes. The big thing I want to tell you guys about is that if you skip any of these um, solo pulls, you will not have count. So there's three of them that people do often skip. This is one of them here, this animated garden, guardian right at the start. This is another one here, purification construct uh, in the middle of the dungeon. And uh, then the bridge, a lot of people will skip this pack here. If at any point you skip any of those things, you're in serious trouble because now you're gonna have to pull one of these packs. And uh, this pack, especially one of the most dangerous packs in the dungeon. So I definitely wouldn't recommend pulling that on any uh, real week. And the only other thing I want to bring up is that um, I recommend lusting here on this boss. Uh, if you can, lust on the axe boss. If you cannot, for whatever reason, like uh, axe boss is first and your lust is not off cooldown, then just save it. And then from then on, if it's tyrannical week, save it for King Dazar. And if, if it is not, if it's fortified week, you can lust on Zul or more so... If you're scared of Zul in any way, like if Zul it seems daunting to you, then lust there. If not, lust for the second half of King Dazar. And in this route, I uh, explain that I will have a mind-controlled pet, and we have exact 100% count, so this mind-controlled pet will be the final thing we kill, and that will be at the end of the dungeon. And then on teaming, um, one big change here is that we have to get one more pack, and it's a bit awkward. Uh, I don't really like where I'm pulling it, but... Uh, that's the dungeon really you got to deal with it so what i do is we uh we do this bridge skip and then go back and get it and then continue on with the rest of the dungeon so that's what we're doing in king's rest let's take a look at shrine shrine is one that you guys have probably seen me do a lot on stream and i've changed it again from the way i was doing it on stream uh, and i still don't really like it to be honest um but main thing here is that we're skipping this stuff and we're also skipping this stuff now this is why i don't really like it because these mobs give five percent count each these mini bosses so you can't really skip all three of them i'm skipping two of them but i think i could see myself doing a route where we just pulled all of this instead and then skipped all of this but one main trick here that i want to show you guys which i haven't haven't actually done myself but i wanted to do the whole time i just keep forgetting to get the freaking obelisk is take the obelisk and then skip this pack for now run past it with the obelisk start the rp and while the rp is happening come back up and kill the pack and that's something that usually happens anyway uh, just because if you get kind of like right where my mouse is it will start the rp but just make sure and you can do that with this route and one thing i'll say about shrine is that uh the more count you have the better as you see i actually uh this route i have 102 percent and that's perfectly fine because you're not going to get 102 percent you're going to kill like something like for example if i clear this pack out it's going to take me under 100 percent or whatever but you're gonna fight these mobs and you're gonna only kill like three out of the seven of them or whatever and then you'll get count like the dungeon ends before you get 102 percent so uh, that's something to think about in shrine and then now uh hugely different is my teaming shrine route and that is because i just can't figure out a way what's going on i can't figure out a way to get count and um 
Yeah, so we're, di we're just instead what we're doing is we're only skipping this one. So previously we'd be skipping both of these, but now we're gonna pull this middle stuff here, and that's pretty much it. There's nothing else different about the route. I mean, there's this pack here, but that is actually like you can't skip these things. They're gonna be in your way. Okay, so that shrine. Let's take a look at Siege of Brawl. Siege of Brawl might be one of the easiest routes, honestly, um, to learn. That is not necessarily to do. Teaming is above at that time. Anyway, uh, yeah, so nothing nothing weird here. We're not using the obelisk to skip at all. This one uh, we are using to skip a little bit just because I want to uh, I want to pull these together. And it's a lot easier to pull them together if you're coming from this direction. If I stand like right here, I can Gorfiend them all together. Whereas, uh, you know, if you're pulling them from this direction, you'd have to run by them and stuff. So this is way better. Uh, but yeah, other than that, uh, nothing special here. I do recommend lusting on this trash, even though um, basically I, I put a note. If uh, if you can lust on this boss and it's going to save you a phase, then you should do it. Otherwise, you should save lust for the trash. And you could even pull this pack with this uh, set here, too, if you really are sure, confident that lust is going to carry you. The only other thing that I want to note here is that this is a long skip. It looks short. But there's actually the barricade here, right? So we're taking the spire from here all the way around to here. So you really got to be careful because if you don't, if you mess this up, uh, yeah, you're in serious trouble here. Let's put it that way. So, um, yeah, you then <laughs> you don't want to do that. Uh, but yeah, so what we're doing on uh, teaming instead is we have to come back and kill this pack. And there's a couple other changes made early on, like getting this stuff, which I normally don't need. But yeah, this plus uh, this pack here is enough to get to 100... Wait, why does it say 111%? Oh, that's because it's not actually teaming. <laughs> I was like, what the hell? Anyway, yeah, 101%, so that's good. Uh, all right, so let's move on from Siege of Brawls. Temple of Seth is definitely the easiest key now, uh, thanks to the route changes. So not much to comment on here. Hopefully you've seen it on stream. Uh, all you want to do, long story short, is just be way under count here. So you could finish, basically you want to be at 90% count when you start this boss. And then you can pull these two packs and that will get you there. And that is going to be insanely good because you can kill, as I put a note here, you can kill uh, this pack with the god mode buff from Sethralis' last boss. And that is that. Do I uh, change anything in teaming? In teaming there's like not really anything that you can change there's just yeah these mobs just kind of equate for it so yeah the only change i made on teaming is you got to kill the crocolis rider instead so that's pretty good mother load we talked about that we got under rot next under rot's another really easy route uh, the big thing I'll warn you guys about is that you really want to make sure you get this pack here. If you don't, you have to pull a bunch of extra stuff at the end. And uh, I I'm doing a route where we're skipping spider. I feel like it's mandatory because I cannot stand going left and right here. Because the way you do it, you like, you have to come down and then you'd have to either go around the back here or, like, kind of hug this wall and kind of ride up here and then go all around. Otherwise, you're going to aggro this thing. So I have no interest in going to the spider and the... Uh, this guy uh, there's some options for it but i don't do it so this is why the route is the way it is uh and then a one note to make here in t oh yeah something else i should bring up though as this note here um you cannot go down without 100 percent count so that means you will be at 102 percent count when you finish this dungeon because even though you're skipping the spider uh you have to have 100 percent count before you can go down so you'll be fighting the spider for no count uh, effectively but there's there's no way to avoid that unless you pull the spider like before so Anyway, um, the big thing here is this. Uh, typically on the non-teaming route, this is what it looks like. On the non-teaming route, I have these arrows showing you how to get there. You run directly into this tree, kind of bonk your head off the tree, and then make a left. Uh, you cannot do this very easily at all, really, on teaming. This pack is too voluminous. Like, you will probably aggro one of these two if you try to do that. So instead, I recommend that you're going to have to just fight this. And it's going to be pretty difficult. This is probably going to be one of the harder packs in the game. Uh, but it's just for those avoidable AoE casts. Like, uh, the maggots, they do that breath. So it's just avoidable. It sounds easy. It sounds easy on paper, but it's not because they're going to be all casting it in four different directions. So you just want to make sure that you're uh, AoE stunning and stuff like that. Now, Toad the Gore is a complicated one to read uh, because there's so many. There's five different levels. Actually, six. Wait, wait, wait. Seven different levels on this map. That's insane. Uh, but the main things you want to be aware of is that we're getting a lot of count early. So we could skip at the end. And if for some reason you get here and you do not have count, you can kill some of this stuff. This is on teaming. But yeah, if you get here and you don't have enough count, um, you can just skip a couple of those things and, 
or you can just kill a couple of those things. Uh, this, they, they give a fair amount of count, so what I'd recommend is to just CC one and kill the other. You don't want to fight both of them. They're pretty pesky, but otherwise, um, what, maybe one other thing that you should know is that, um, yeah, you, so you're skipping here with this obelisk, but uh, in order to do that, you do need... Oh man, this is so confusing with these different areas. Yeah, this is a pack that normally, in fact, I should make, I should have made this blue, but I forgot and I don't want to update all these things again. So anyway, this is a pack that normally nobody would have ever pulled. In fact, I'm pulling this too. And that is just to make sure that we have 100% count at the end. The reason it's iffy is because of this part here. Uh, if you do not have somebody who can open the doors, it's not the end of the world, but you're not going to have count. These mobs give 1% each and there's five of them. So it's actually a fair amount of count. Uh, but yeah, so that's Total Gore. Uh, Waycrest Manor is another really awkward one. In fact, I um, I have two separate routes here. Uh, there's not actually, there's a note in, let's see what I actually say in Waycrest. Uh, yeah, so the right one, um, so there's two, instead of a teaming only route, I just made a right and left route. Now, I don't know if this is a coincidence or not, but I have never gone left this whole season. Every time I've done this dungeon, it's always been right. And I don't know if that's something they change or if it's, I'm just... You know, that's just luck or what, but um, what's going on? Oh, Rusty's whispering me. Anyway, um, yeah, so there's just two different routes here, but going left is now just the, the worst way. I feel like going right right is way better now, and it, you're going to see why in this route. Uh, basically, we use the middle spire to get here and then skip all of this left side, uh, which is, in my opinion, the harder trash for sure. That trash is very dangerous. But if you are going left out of the gate, then you just do a normal route. Like, literally, you don't do any skipping at all. Uh, this is the only thing you skip. You just skip these mobs that are up here. Um, whatever. Or actually, I have them routed in, but it doesn't even matter. We're way over count. Uh, but, yeah, so you basically don't skip anything. If you're going left, you just do the old route, which is still very efficient. Uh, but, yeah, that's Waycrest, and it's going to be a little random, so it's hard to compromend. Compromend? That's not a word. Anyway... Um, here's Junkyard. So let's talk a little bit about Junkyard. This one's probably one of the most complicated routes. Uh, and the reason that it's so complicated is because the bosses are random. So I have a note in the, um, the document there telling you about this. But yeah, basically, uh, this is what you want to pull. The stuff I have routed for is what you want to pull. You just might not be able to do it in this order. So always lust on whatever the first boss you're going to do is. Uh, the thing is, it should never be this boss. So I always lust here as well. And then you should be able to get enough count and time in between these two bosses to lust again here. But if you're in a position where that's not true, you need lust here. It's not optional. You cannot do this last boss without lust because if you have to do a second phase, that's like three plus minutes added to the key. You can't afford that. So uh, make sure you're lusting at that time. Uh, but otherwise, if the ideal route was to be done, you do Gobamac first. Then you'd clear for this and kill this. And then you'd go uh, quickly to Gunker. You'd probably have a good. You'd probably have a good 15 minutes between this, though, so you'd end up wasting a little lust. Uh, but so, what we do here with skipping is a little bit awkward, right? Uh, so then we got to go here, but you got to swerve this pad. This pad is actually pretty dangerous, uh, and if you do end up pulling a couple extra things, you have enough count to budget for not pulling this mob, like to just fight it with the boss. And I would recommend that on certain weeks, but I'm not going to recommend it for this series of of routes because. I don't like. I don't want the routes to be varied based on the affixes, and that would be the definition of that. So, anyway, you're gonna get this spire, take it here. You're gonna use uh, this spire here, but you gotta clear out this trash first. Then you're gonna take this spire all the way here. You're gonna stand on the platform. We actually explained this in the junkyard video, and then you're gonna jump down, and uh, you gotta kill this pack, um, mostly because it's gonna aggro when you click the spire, but also because you need count. And then that's it. Take the spire here, so you can skip this stupid pack here. And that's Junkyard, and the last one, and then Teaming and Junkyard is actually barely different. Uh, the only thing is you're going to get one or two extra packs along the way. Most of the stuff here is not actually... Oh yeah, this is the big change here. We were skipping this on not Teaming, but on Teaming we'll have to get it. Uh, but yeah, the final one is Workshop, and uh, typically I would say that Workshop is the easiest key in the game. In fact, uh, I still would say that regardless, but I do want to make one note, and this is a great place to end here, because this is something that you guys should hopefully learn here. Um... 
Well, first of all, let me point this out because I didn't actually mention this in the workshop video because I didn't know it at the time. But uh, yeah, I put a note in this string, in this um, whatever this uh, this route here. Uh, you can actually grab the stuff and take it to a hammer, and the hammer will kill it for you. Just be aware that the striders are going to try to charge. Uh, as you see, this flying peck, it's they're going to try to like jump in uh, on top of another player. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. But the main thing that I want to talk about here is the ending. Okay, so the ending is easily the most generous thing that's ever happened in this video game like the fact that they didn't force you to kill this pack is kind of crazy and i think it shifts the paradigm uh for blizzard that they're uh i don't know i don't know originally in bfa i was like a lot of complaints were that things were just so hard uh and i would say that that's intentional the game's supposed to be hard but uh this season i think they've shifted from that and i don't know what the future holds but yeah i just wanted to bring that up uh, but why we're bringing it up specifically is because on teaming, it's a much bigger deal, okay? So on teaming, uh, so here's what it looks like on not teaming, right? Like obviously exactly like as expected, you just do the route, you skip this stuff here. These are some of the hardest mobs in the whole game, really, this pack especially. There's two of these defense bots uh, that you're gonna fight along the way if you fought that, and that's just an absolute hell pack. So um, yeah, that's it. You'd get exactly 100% count. It's very easy. But on teaming, which we haven't actually done yet, but I assume this is going to work fine. So this is what I'm going to do here. There's an extra robot. This robot is not here on uh, regular uh, not teaming. Um, so what you could have did was you could have just pulled these, and then you would have exactly 100% count. But the problem is they have uh, more health. Well, they actually have the same health, but they give uh, less count, okay? And they're they're less dangerous, okay? But... They cannot be pulled together. You cannot fight two of these together. Like, if you fight two of these together, you're probably going to wipe because they're going to do their mechanics in a way that are going to overlap to the point that you probably can't dodge them. So, would not recommend pulling one or more than one of these spider tanks. So, instead, this is a little complicated, and, and this is why I'm doing this last because um, this is the only route in the game where I change, like, heavily what I'm doing in here. And it looks heavily changed because there's almost nothing to do in this route. But this is heavily changed. So instead of just killing the spire and not doing anything with it, we're going to kill the boss and then return to the spire and use it to skip up here and then kill one spider tank and then leave and then come here and we're going to kill these two. Okay, so that should have been pink. I forgot to do that. Uh, but yeah, these, these should be pink for teaming changes. And um, this is a big deal. These mobs are dangerous, but you can pull them both together and you shouldn't wipe. So that's the thing. Like, it's more efficient even though they're more dangerous, to pull both of these together than each of these individually. So that's my thought process there. So anyway, let me know if you guys have any questions. The um, the document is going to be in the description, and I would love if you guys uh, you know comment on it, if, it's, if you've used it, if it's helped you, if you have things that you think I should change, let me know. Um, historically, I've been pretty unopen to things changing on routes, and the reason that is is because I've done the routes for so long that some random person who thinks they know better than me I mean, maybe they do for sure, but it's just not worth me relearning the route. And as you've seen this season, I make a lot of mistakes with route just because of muscle memory. Shrine is the biggest one. I'm basically doing the route entirely different than I used to. So in the past, it would be like, it's not worth my potential errors that I'm going to make throughout this route to gain a minimal amount of benefit. But that's not true anymore now. Now it's completely different. You gain a lot of benefit. These things are free. They're really easy to skip. Uh, like the big thing is, you know, like talking about like mother load, like in order to do that, you need to execute that perfectly and have the right class comp and be completely aware of when and where you're doing it. Right. So you would benefit from doing that. If you executed it, you would gain like, you know, maybe a couple minutes of extra time there. That's really valuable. But the problem is when you're pugging, it's just not worth it. Like if you mess it up, the key's over. Right. And it's easy to mess up, but now it's impossible to mess up. Like you just use these obelisks. There's no way you could possibly mess it up. So that's, you know, that's a little bit about my thought process and how it's evolved into this season. So let me know what you guys think. Otherwise, I uh, hope it helps. And if you have any questions, let me know. And we will see you guys in the next one.